Welcome back to Full Throttle TV and the FTSR Blackwater Products USA Truck Series. Tonight we're at Auto Club Speedway. We got 150 miles of action here set to go. And I'm Dean Set in the booth with me, Brad Patterson. Brad, Auto Club tonight. A little different track, a little something unique, a two mile track. Should be a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, that's right. It should be a really good race tonight. We're sitting there. Uh, the weather looks like it's going to be a dynamic sky, mostly cloudy, 65 degree. Ta track temp's going to be 67. It's going to make a lot of grip in these trucks, but we're still going to have to worry about that tire. Uh, Auto Club always lends itself to very numerous uh, lanes of race and very wide race track. A track that you can definitely get a draft. So I expect it to be really close racing all night long. Absolutely will be, and uh, that'll bring us right into our keys to the race. We got getting off a of turn two, uh, always key at this track. You know, cars can get a little loose there, and you can have a little bobble. You lose all that speed down that back straightaway. It's gonna be really key to get off that track, that corner really well. Track position, kind of a, a key here. It, it's not big here, but if we get some cautions, you know, you're gonna want to be up near the front. And, you know, qualifying well, always big. Brings us to the third, which is the tire rule. Of course, we have the tire rule. We got one set on the truck, uh, three in the garage, so a total of four sets of tires. So if we do get some cautions, and guys will have to make a choice whether they want to come in and pit for those tires, or they want to get just gas, or they want to just stay out and ride it out. We've seen guys like Casey McMullen stay out when the caution comes out on, say, lap 20, and almost get lapped. Then a secondary caution comes. It plays very well for him in the long run, but you can get burnt by it too, Brad. Uh, it's, a, it's a crazy, crazy thing the way this tire rule develops for the race. Yeah, it really lends yourself to making sure that you're going to be disciplined uh, and, and really think through the entire race. I mean, three sets in the pits, you know, 75 laps here, you think that's more than enough. But the problem with this is, is let's face it, you're going to get 10, 15 laps really solid uh, tire before they really start breaking off. So you want to make sure that you got a set at the bank. But, you know, like you said, track position is going to be a key, especially if we have anything like a long green flag run like, the last two races have been uh, indicative of. So you really want to pick and choose when you're going to use those sets. Yeah, and we got something a little new for you tonight, the Bullseye 5. So we're looking right now at David Hensley. He's one of our Bullseye 5. Now, if you finished outside of the top 10 in the previous race, you're eligible for a random draw. We'll pick five drivers. Those drivers will race to, for some iRacing credits if they're able to win the race tonight. David Hensley, one of those drivers tonight. We got David Skildhouse is one of those drivers. Um, Kevin Sargent as well is one of our Bullseye 5 drivers. We got Daryl Spear as well. And Terry Cooper Jr. will have an opportunity as well as he's in the pits right now. Absolutely. That's something that, that's going to be a great thing. It's going to add a little bit of 
a little bit more excitement to some of the guys, maybe possibly give them a little bit more, uh, as if they didn't have enough already, but a little bit more enticement to get up there and, and try to do their best, which I expect a couple of these names, you know, there David go. Hensley, he's Good been doing very well qualify. throughout the series, Derek through the Jr. I expect both of those to run really well tonight. So it's going to be really interesting to see if somebody can climb that mountain and really uh, take advantage of it. Yeah, it really is. It's going to be quite interesting. Brings another layer to the broadcast here, which we love up in the booth. Check in some of these drivers, see how they're doing throughout the course of the night. But, you know, with this league and these these tire rules, uh, sometimes gas strategy, you know, anybody can win a race. And to, to have something to race for for uh, some of these guys, just a fantastic deal. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've been fortunate, or unfortunate, if you will, for us in the booth here. Uh, we've gone the last race caution-free, so the tire rule didn't really come into effect. Uh, we haven't really put anybody to the test of making that uh, difficult decision of what they're going to do. Tonight may be a little bit different. Um, it can definitely change the complexity of the race and how you set up. So really looking forward to this race here at All Club Speedway. Um, really looking forward to the new Bullseye 5. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. And like you said, we haven't had it come into play this year, but uh, you remember last year, and it came into play quite often. So I'm expecting just the law of averages that we've got to get a caution here. Now, you know, it's so hard for us up in the booth. We're rooting for a caution almost. You know, as a racer, you never want to see it. And this league at FTSR, full throttle sim racing, guys, you got to check it out. Fantastic drivers here. Green and, uh, green and clean. I mean, they do it all the time. Full race length, green. You just don't see this in like iRacing official or, or in most leagues, Brad. Oh, absolutely. The guys here, they come, they race with respect. They race, they do first class racing. Um, however, if there's going to be a race that's going to do it, it's going to be something like this because you're going to have a lot of comers and goers. The draft is a very big thing. You're going to have, uh, as one of the keys to the race, get off of turn two. Uh, turn two has a very – trucks tend to get a little tight and kind of get moving around. You're going to have some drivers that it might be a little bit of mirror driving trying to block. So if something is going to happen, it's going to probably happen on the back stretch or on the exit of two in all reality. Yeah, you're exactly right. And right now we'll take a quick commercial break. We'll get back to that – action we'll set the uh the starting lineup here for this race at the auto club speedway coming up to the line being chased and it was Brayden johnson unbelievable finish it was one one thousandths of a second between them. Green flag in the air. We are racing in the 2020, 24 hours of Daytona. They go door to door for the feature race lead here on the last lap of the race. Side by side for the race lead in the final quarter at Homestead. Down the back straightaway, three wide again for the race lead. This is unbelievable stuff here tonight. Aloma is going to have to be very deep on the brakes, and he is very deep on the brakes. It's side by side through the corner. This is for the win. It'll be side by side. Davies low, Ottinger high. To the very inside is Garrett low. Four wide at the strike. For all he's with here on this outside line. Neck and neck. Who's going to back out? Does anyone back out? A step and starts to squeeze on the inside. And now he'll try and straight line it. Goes under the apron. Drag race to the line. It's so close to call. Welcome back to Full Throttle TV as we check in on the board here. Looks like Bobby Terrell on the top right now. Brad, not, you know, I talked to Bobby before the race. Of course, typical Bobby Terrell. I got nothing. I'm not that good. I won't be in the top five. I'm terrible. Here he is, top of the board. 
Oh, I don't think anybody's surprised about Bobby Turo being on the top of the board. He's been one of the most consistent drivers over the last few years. Uh, Bernard Pearson sitting in second. Look at that. Zach McDaniel off after that strong run, but unfortunate ending to last week. Uh, followed by John Adams, last week's winner. Terry Cooper Jr., he's going to be one of our bullseye five drivers to watch, uh, as well as Charles uh, Charneski is in the sixth. David Chillhouse, another one of those drivers in seventh. Tracy Powers in eighth. TJ Bartell in ninth. Followed by Lane Allen in the 14th, running out the top 10. Yeah, that'll be our top 10. And once these guys got gridded here, we'll run down the rest of our guys here in the lineup. But what a field we have. I mean, a guy like Brody Hanna sitting back in 11th. You got Tyler Marble back in 22nd. Casey McMullen in 23rd. This is unbelievable to see some of the quality drivers this far back. Sherwood Williford sitting in 25th spot. Absolutely, but you know what? With a place like this, you can get in just a little bit too hot, trying to get a little too aggressive on that lap, and you're going to end up pushing out of the exits. You're going to scrub a little bit of speed. Sometimes just being smooth and going into the corners nice and gentle will turn you a much faster lap time. Yeah, absolutely correct. we got Bernard Person, really fast in practice. Guys, we're talking about him a bit. He's on the outside of the pole by 0 0.01 seconds. Wow. And why don't we go through these now as uh, Brad already um, did some of these uh, these drivers in the top 10. But we'll run through them again here as we got Bobby Terrell is on the pole. And on the outside of row one is Bernard Person, the 42 of Zach McDaniel. Like you just talked about, Zach and John Adams right, on guys. the outside of row two uh, had this great run we'll here. here the other night. Tire roll. Pause for Don't one second. Tire roll. Got one set on your truck and three sets in the pit. Uh, 75 laps. Uh, try to keep it clean. Sorry about that, folks. We just had to get that muted there off of uh, off of high racing. My apologies. But John Adams and Zach McDaniel there. So we got Terry Cooper Jr. is going to be in the inside of row number three. Russell Chernesky is going to start six in that 20 truck. Starting seven is one of our bullseye five drivers of David Skildhouse. Tracy Powers has been looking really good in that 45. He'll start eighth. TJ Bartell is going to start in ninth. And Lane Allen in tenth. Heading into 11th place, we've got Brody Hanna and Jason Martin starting in 12th. Michael Blackner will be. Hold on. Brian Hellman, the 26th. It's going to be next. He'll be in 13th place. Michael Black there, 14th. And as we look in to finish round out this field, we got Jason Spear, William Long, Stephen Loomis, Larry Anderson, James Torrey, Brian Conklin, Tim Bills, Tyler Marble, Casey McMullen, Ronnie Royal, Sherwood Wilford, Matthew Gerringer, Jared Carr, Brandon Alder, David Hensley, Kevin Sargent. I believe that is going to be it for our field tonight. Wow, that was a that was a mouthful. Yeah, it, <laughs> it most certainly was. But you know what? These drivers are pulling those belts tight. They're getting ready to go for 75 laps at the Auto Club Speedway. They're running out of turn four with the pace car. Pace car is about to drop off. We're getting ready to go green, and I'm looking forward to a great race. Yeah, absolutely. As the pace car does drop off, the four of Bobby Terrell leads them down to the line. Green, green, green. And we're green and away here. The four down low, the eight of Bernard Person is up high. Zach McDaniel and John Adams, last week's two, his two battled so hard for that win. Zach McDaniel, unfortunate pit air that cost him the race. But we'll see what these guys got tonight. And of course, Terry Cooper Jr., one of our bullseye five drivers, sitting in fifth. Absolutely, as they come off of the on two and in the back stretch you see the 84 tuck right behind the eight of Bernard Person. That might give him the edge he needs going into three. Yeah, Bernie looking tough on the high side there. He's got John Adams kind of pushing him down those straights. Bobby looking strong down low. 
He's holding them off for now. Yeah, Bernard actually went a little bit wide there. I'm not too sure he's too keen on the 84. John Adams kind of leaning on that back bunker so early in this run. These trucks do have low air pressure. They might be a little bit squirrely. It might take a couple of laps to really get the trucks to where they feel good underneath these drivers. So it's a matter of risk versus reward right now. As the 84 is actually looking like it's getting a little bit squirrely as the 8 is uh, getting a little dicey. Yeah, no real surprise there. John Adams likes some loose and fast. And uh, we're talking about his truck, of course. <laughs> and uh, but he's a heck of a driver there, part of that slip, uh, slip, uh, slip angle motorsports uh, dominant team over there. Yeah, absolutely. As the eight truck of Bernard Persons actually goes to the front, followed by John Adams in second. I think it, the way it's looking, John Adams is really being aggressive. It's only going to be a matter of time before he tries to put a move on the eight truck. Well, John Adams still in third, so, or no, that's him in second, my apologies. So, yeah, John Adams definitely looking down low right now. Yeah, John Adams as he goes to the inside entering turn three, he's going to pull, he's going to pull even with Bernard Persons. He's going to have a little bit of a favorable position coming on the exit of four as he takes the lead from Bernard Persons, John Adams to the point. So John Adams now in the lead, Brad, and you know, we talk a lot about tires in this league. Is he pushing too hard too soon here? Uh, it's really going to be all dependent of, you know, in about 10 or 12 laps, we're really going to be able to start to figure that out. He might have a really loose truck. He might have a really good setup underneath him. Uh, we really aren't going to know as we see some other movers. Brody Hanna all the way up to fourth place already after starting 11th in just three or four laps. That's obviously a truck that's going to be hooked up. It's going to be interesting to see what he can do as he's making his way to the front. Yeah, Brody Hanna looking good, you know. It was only a race or two ago. Brody was lost, couldn't figure out what was going on with, the, with any of these vehicles, really. And all of a sudden, he had a good cup run, and here he is in the trucks looking really good early. Yeah, I, I'm starting to see a couple of trucks that aren't, aren't handling very well. They might have been really fast and cute. Maybe they uh, had a little bit of setup issues where having the eight truck, I saw him uh, the last lap push really wide into the exit of four. So there's some really ill handling trucks. They might be fast for a few laps, but they might be really ill handling. And you're going to start seeing some real comers and goers. Yeah, you really are. You know, some of these guys, like Brody's obviously pushing hard and early. John Adams pushing. Bernard's lingering. I'm not sure how hard he's pushing. I would say he's, he's doing quite a lot. He's pushing hard. But some of these other guys, you know, famously like a Casey McMullen, who's uh, quite a ways back here, a notorious uh, a tire saver. We'll see what he can do. He's got Jeff Bratton back here with him. Yeah, the, the only thing with saving tires on a track like this is Casey McMullen, he's, he's over eight and a half seconds back. Um, outside of literally really saving a lot of tire which i don't think he's going to be able to make up eight seconds on a track like this he might be looking more to just try to stay out of any type of uh issue that he thinks that might happen um but i'm looking at the 42 of zach mcdaniel more than anybody here he's just kind of maintaining his position i don't think he's really using up his stuff uh 21 and tj uh martell is kind of doing the same thing 25 terry cooper jr they just kind of maintain I think they're there just to kind of ride it out, see what their truck's really going to do on her, and see if they're going to need any adjustments, not really uh, tearing up their equipment, and that's a smart move right now. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, you mentioned 21 of TJ Bartell. Really nice to see him up here in the top five right now, battling hard. TJ, you know, one of our tough luck guys. Hopefully that's ended for him here. He's looking good in this place. Uh, absolutely, and you really can't miss that truck. That's a beautiful truck, bright yellow can uh, definitely spot him out of the crowd for sure. Yeah, it really is. I love that truck, the old Pennzoil machine, one of my favorites all time. As we see Bobby Terrell, you know, he's falling back now. We did talk to him. He did say that uh, he was struggling a little bit tonight, but do you think he's saving tires here? I, I got to think that's what he's doing. Um, I got to kind of think a little bit of both. I mean, I think he's just found himself in a, in a nice spot where he's not too far back. I mean, he's 1.3 seconds out of the lead. But in all reality, all of the trucks are within contention to him. It's early in this race. We know we're going to have pit stops. We know we're going to have tire fall off. So might as well go ahead and, 
you know, sometimes you're not less necessarily racing the, the people around you as much as you're racing the gaps and you're racing the track. And I think he's doing an excellent job of doing that. Absolutely. As right now, we'll take a quick look in at our bullseye five here. Our top right now, I believe, uh, starting fifth, sixth, Terry Jr. And after him, you're going to have David Skillhouse in that 62 truck currently in set, uh, eighth place so those two are doing pretty good and perhaps got a shot here yeah absolutely got... uh the next i believe the next person we have going down our list is we're going to have david hensley in the 43 start at 29th is currently in the 24th position then the 09 of kevin sergeant uh he started 30th in the 25th position so we're really kind of just holding steady in the back i think that those guys are just trying to turn some laps to make sure that they make it through. Uh, right now, the ones that are really looking forward to trying to, to put a, a stamp on this is going to be the 25 of Terry Cooper Jr. and the 62 of David Chillhouse. Yeah, definitely. As it looks like Daryl Spear, our other competitor, I'm not sure if, where Daryl's at currently. Uh, Daryl's going to be in the 29th position. Okay, so Daryl's still in here. He's still got a shot. And he's going to go by Casey McMullen, who seems to be really struggling. He is either saving a ton of tire or he is struggling mightily. A past champion here. Yeah, sometimes the night's just not your night or the track just doesn't suit your abilities with the setup. So, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be the last of Casey McMullen of this season for, for sure. So when we look up back up front, we got John Adams leading the way, Brody Hanna in second, Bernard Persons third, Zach McDaniel in fourth, and TJ Bartell rounding out our top five. Our first bullseye uh, competitor there is Terry Cooper Jr. in sixth place. And don't look now, but it's ever so slightly, but Brody Hanna is actually pulling just a small little bit back on that 84 truck every single lap. Yeah, you got to wonder what the 84 is doing up here. Is he conserving? Is he pushing? I mean, you know, John, I just don't see him ever really being the conservative type, but he could. He could have a little cushion and just back off of it. Yeah, and at the same time, how much did the 24 of Brody Hanna, how much tires did he use getting from 11th to second? He did it relatively quick. He did it in, in a few laps, but you still got to think he was really pushing it really hard, so... Uh, Bernard Persons and the 42 is acting Daniel. They might be in the catbird seat. They're just kind of biding their time, I think. They're just kind of everybody from third to about six, I think, is really just trying to see what this race is going to do, trying to see how the trucks are going to react, and whether or not we're going to sit here and we're going to have cautions or we're going to have another green fly win. We look in on their 10th place car, Russell Trudowski. Yeah, he's having a nice solid run here as he's top 10 kind of start to separate from the rest of the field. Yeah, Russell started in sixth position. He's fallen off just a little bit. Um, I think he's content again with just riding in the back right now, trying to hold on. I think he might be one of those guys that started off really fast and the truck's starting to go a little bit tight on him. Uh, as they're definitely spreading out because the further back you go, you're going to see a lot more trucks that are ill handling. No surprise here. Lap 14, clean and green. FTSR guys, great drivers out here. This is what they do best. And of course, this will bring in the tire rule, or the, I should say into pit strategy. Maybe not the tire rule without cautions, but pit strategy could be big. Do you want to be in first? Do you want to be in last? What are your thoughts on that, Brad? Oh, man, it really determines how I'm uh... I mean, when you're running in a pack like this, you know, like the top, you know, top five, top ten is, it really isn't going to matter that much. You're not going to make up that much of a difference because of the draft. The draft is really going to help you. I mean, you're talking about these guys, John Adams right now, he qualified over 40, 40.4. His last lap was a 40.9. So there's not a whole lot of drop-off going there. Um, as actually the 23 of Brady Hanna is looking to the inside of our leader right now, challenging for the lead. And we jump in the eight trucks cockpit here and watch this battle up front of him as a 23 down low looks like he's going to take it bernard person trying to follow him on through here 
Yeah, it looks like the 23 is actually going to do a little bit of a slide job right in front of the 84. It's actually going to leave the door open for the 8 car or for the 8 truck. And right there behind him is a 42. This is going to be a four truck battle here before too long. Now, this is a real surprise here seeing John Adams fade a bit here. He might lose three spots. It could be four before this is all done. It's going to be very frustrating for the 84 truck. Yeah, absolutely. If you see on the exit of four there, he really got close to that outside wall. That that truck seems to be like it's just an adjustment or two away of being able to stay on it. He might have pushed it a little too fast too early. Might have took away a little bit of those tires because he's definitely having to breathe it in the corners. Yeah, he really is. And, you know, sometimes the weather can get you too. Uh, you guys practice in certain weather conditions and you come in here, it's a little hotter, it's a little cooler, and your setup just like that. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Some of these guys obviously set up for more of a longer run and some of them were to fire off that gate. I want to say the 84 John Adams definitely set up for the fire out of the gate. You know, last time around he was in the second position, you know, challenging for the lead. Now he's back to fourth and still seems like he's under he's under the gun still with the 21 of TJ Bartel. If he doesn't watch it, he's going to end himself in the top five and possibly falling fall even farther back. Watch Bernard Person, the guys guys were talking about during practice this week. Everybody thought he had a really good truck, and here he is. We're looking off the right front suspension here as he battles here with the 23, almost touching him there. Yeah, I think you're you're finding out right now that Bernard Persons was saving some tire. I mean, you look at the 23, the 23 went through the field very quickly. The 8 sat there the entire time, and he's all over the back of the 23 of Bertie Hanna. The 42 of Zach Daniels is also there. He's waiting for his opportunity. I think they're running a smart, very smart race with Bernard Persons, and I think he's going to be there through the entirety. Yeah, I think you're right about that. 42, too. Is He's shown a great ability last race to be fast while saving tires, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's there. And don't count out TJ Bartel, still lingering in fifth place, doing a great job. Oh, absolutely. The top five seem to be distancing themselves just a little bit from the rest of the field. Uh, basically, the top ten is kind of in their own league versus the rest of the field. Once you get to 11th place, you're really dropping off definitely true. A couple second gap there from Terry Cooper back to like Tim Bills. Yeah, I'm really I'm really surprised. I mean, there's a lot of big names that are farther back in that pack. I mean, you're looking back at you know, the 33 of Sherwood Williford. He's sitting right now currently 16th over 9 seconds back from the leaders. You know, the 43 David Hensley, he's one of our bullseye top 5. He started 29th, he's currently up to 18th, but again, he's almost 10 seconds back. You know, James Torrey, Tyler Marble, Casey McMullen, I mean, some top-notch drivers that really got on the wrong end of the stick here. Maybe setup, maybe weather. Uh, their trucks are definitely not handling well, and they're definitely looking for a caution to make some adjustments. Yeah, Casey's still lingering back here in 23rd spot, very surprising. Looking at Tyler Marble and 22nd, both these guys right where they started still. Very surprising indeed. Looking at a Brian Helm, he started in 6th, he fell back to 13th so far. Not sure if he's saving or what's going on there. Check a couple of our Team Marble drivers. We get Brian Conklin right in front of his teammate, Tyler Marble there in 20th. So struggling a little bit tonight with that chart. Well, not to interrupt the game, but we got a battle for the lead as Bernard Persons actually went to the front. It's a tooth and nail battle with, between him and Brody Hanna. The 84 of John Adams has kind of resurged. He's back in the third. He's been all over as these guys battle up front. It's you know brought the 42 back into it. It's brought the 84 back into it as they put a little bit of distance between themselves and the 21 of TJ Bartel. It's starting to really heat up with these tires. They're starting to slip and slide, and everybody's starting to take advantage really are and you've been right about uh, Bernard Person so far that truck seems to have the longevity as he takes over the point here the 8 truck looking really good tonight yeah the big difference between this week and last week is that draft I don't think these guys are going to be able to walk away from each other you know that draft is really going to keep them all tight but you're starting to see the 42 just starting to lose a little bit of touch off the back it might be a little bit of uh, a little push it looks like it's just not getting off of two very well 
But the 84 seems like it's coming back strong again. He might have just decided he was going to sit back, cool his tires off, and make another run at it. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all. John, a, you know, a really smart racer. You see, ooh, he's getting awful close to the 23 there, kind of pushes him up high. And Brody, you got to watch him. Brody may come back on him after that move. Yeah, I think cooler heads are going to prevail. It's still early in this session. Uh, the big question here is, where are we going to run? Are we going to have any takers that are going to try to, you know, put this race into three stages? Are we going to have guys short pit? Are we going to worry more about tires versus fuel? Uh, this is when it's starting to get interesting. You know, we're on lap 24. We're a quarter of the way through this race. Strategy is going to start rearing its ugly head, if you will. You know, are you going to have guys that are going to run the full tank out? You got to have some gentlemen in the back that, you know, nothing to lose for 10 seconds off, try to make something of it. Exactly correct as we already see some kind of strategy playing out with a guy like Terry Cooper Jr. falling back now to five seconds back kind of making that first pack into maybe nine drivers now as Tim Bills gets by him in the 77 so put Tim Bills up to 10 points now and so does Will Long as it seems like Terry Cooper has burned his stuff up. Yeah actually as I said that it looks like the 51 of Brandon Elder he's actually exiting pit road right now. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how he cycles through the field. I mean, obviously, he wasn't in our top five or top ten, but he's out there now, and, you know, he's one lap down. Um, he came in on lap 23, so he's got fresh tires. He should be able to turn really good lap times. He's going to have the draft because he came right back into a pack. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, that strategy works out for him. Really well as we continue to have... Bernard Person on the point, the 84 of John Adams continues to chase. Brody Han is there. Zach McDaniel fades ever so slightly here. And don't look now, but in fifth place to 26, Brian Helm has gotten by TJ Bartell, as has Russell Cherneski. Yeah, it seems like that 26 is really going to be a late bloomer. I mean, he seems to really get the truck underneath him, and he's turning off some pretty good lap times. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see in about 10 laps if maybe he was the snow, the catbird, if you will, saving the tires, and he's going to have the truck. Yeah, I got the 22 right behind him. I think the 20 learned a lot last week about tire saving, and I wouldn't be surprised to see him start to move forward. Uh, you mean the 20, uh, not the 22? The 20, yes, of Russell Chineski. Right after behind him, we're going to have the 62 of David Chillhouse. He's falling off a little bit, but you know what? He's got a lot to go for. He is one of our bullseye top five drivers. Uh, so he was actually the, the best running of them. And he's doing a very, very good job of just kind of staying in touch with the leaders, not losing too much. Right behind him, you're going to have the four Bobby Trail, not having the run he wanted us. You know, starting on the pole, but at the same time, he's staying in contention. He's far or close enough behind the leaders where if anything happens, he's able to pounce. Yeah, Bobby, I mean, a little surprised that he's fallen this much, but talked to him earlier. He was not happy with that truck. Not sure how he got the pole. He's probably not sure how he got the pole. So, no big surprise to see him in eighth, other than uh, Bobby, one of the best drivers out here, man. A real solid, solid driver. Yeah, it seems like our top three is starting to inch, inch it out a little bit. Uh, the 42 is Zach Medano. He's hanging on, uh, but he's starting to, to lose a little bit. I think the tires are starting to go away on him. Brian Helm, same thing, is going to follow. Uh, it looks like the top three right now are going to be the class of this field. Um, but as I say that, we're getting closer and closer to where pit stops could be a, starting to rear their ugly head, and it could make and change this entire race. We see the 26 come by that 42 now. The 20 of Russell Chinesky is going to follow him on through as those two continue to make headway, picking their way through this field. Yeah, it looks like the 42 is just starting to run a little bit hot on those tires. I mean, we're far enough into this run where if you're abusing that right front, you really don't have nothing. I mean, uh, and now you got to sit there and if you're trying to run the long run, you've really got to start bathing and you're going to start hemorrhaging way too much time with these leaders. Well, the other thing is if you've been saving this whole time, it is time to go. I mean, you're seven, eight laps from your pit window and uh, you need to go. 
Yeah, absolutely. One other thing we got to think about here is mistakes on pit road. We saw that in last weekend's race, or last week's race. If you make a mistake on pit road, it could be the end of your race. We had drivers in the top two racing tooth and nail, and it, was, it came down to a mistake on pit road, and it ultimately handed the 84 John Adams a win last week. There's certain drivers that they got to really be thinking about getting in, getting off, clean, what kind of adjustments they want to make. Uh, you know, you, you could only possibly have one shot at this, so you got to make sure you get it right. Exactly correct. Got to be sharp. Got to get things done correctly. Now, Dean, which side of this would you want to be on? Would you want to be the first truck to pit, or would you want to be one of the last? It depends on my place in the race. Uh, you've got to try something different. The only way really to get out front is to either stay out really long or pit really short. I mean, if my pit window is open now and I'm in, I don't know, six, seventh place, I might come in now. You know, if, like, you got to think most of these guys are going to be right around that 37 to 39 lap range is when they're going to pit. You've got to do something different. Uh, absolutely. It's the 84 looks like he's actually looking to the inside of Bernard Persons going into three right now. Yeah, there's a car up high and Jason Martin. That's going to help that 84. The 23 now pushing back on John Adams, who was really pushing him earlier. And we're going to go three wide down in turn one. Uh, this could get really interesting. There's no way they're going to be able to hold three wide as the 23 reluctantly backs out to maintain the position on the bottom line. Yeah, that was a really smart move by the 23. I'm not sure he wanted to make it, but uh, really a uh, thinking man's move there. It's a long race still, and uh, good job. Absolutely, but what this is doing is that's bringing that 20 and Russell Trineski up to him. Brian Helms made up a little bit of time too, but that 20 is starting to get the slip of that draft, and if they keep up this racing amongst themselves right here, that 20 is going to be all over the back of that 23. Well, that 20 been saving his tires early in the run. I guarantee you he's got the best tires out there in these top four right now. Unfortunately for him, he might have waited too long. It's almost pit stop time, but uh, he's looking really good here. So John Adams continues to lead. Bernard Person in second. Brody Hanna making a move for that second place right now. Russell Cherneski is in fourth, and Brian Helm round out the top five. 23 yeah, down, that 20 oh, I think he's going to get that spot, right? Yeah, I think he is, and you know what? That 20 is there. It's going to be really interesting, interesting to see if he's there strictly because of the racing that happened in front of him, or that he's been really playing the Cats game, and he's been really saving his tires. I think that 20 is going to have something for him. Oh, most definitely he will. Like I said, he's going to run out of time here, unfortunately. But I think he learned a lot. He'll learn exactly how much to save for the next run. As we know, the track wear changes, the track temp changes. And, you know, you don't need to save quite as much in that second run as you did in the first run. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you're the 20, you guys sit there and think you're turning your fastest laps at the end of this. So do you prolong that? You try to turn a little bit more? Or do you try to short pit it and try to get it back at the other side? Yeah, I think in his case, because he's got those great tires, assuming he's got great tires, i probably stay out, push this thing. But in this league, it's tough. These leaders don't want to pit. They might be staying out. I mean, it's so hard to decide what to do. But if you play follow the leader, guess what you end up doing? You follow the leader. Absolutely. But you know what? Who I'm really impressed with is that 26 of Brian Helm. He is really staying in contact with the leaders. He's all by himself. He's got some clean air, so he's able to make some good laps. But he's really keeping them honest and keeping, them in, keeping himself in contention. As well as the 62, David Chillhouse, uh, one of our Bullseye 5 drivers. Uh, he is really staying in contact. He's really keeping himself in favor. Uh, he doesn't have the draft that these front guys have. You know, one Bob on pit road, and he can be there. Yep, for sure. I mean, great to see David Skillhouse out there. Like you say, a bullseye five driver. One of our new things out here. If you didn't finish in the top ten in the previous race, if you win this race, you will win some iRacing credits. It's a fabulous new that's out there and uh, you know we'll see how it plays out here. 
Absolutely. You know, if I'm the 42 of Zach McDaniel, you know, he started third. He ran in the top five for the majority of the night. He's dropped back to eighth. He's about three and a half seconds off the lead. That's the first individual that I would think that would, if you're going to sit there and you're going to play the leapfrog game of pit early, that's the person that's going to do it. The only problem with that is, is we know that his tires doesn't last. He doesn't have a long run set. So you're going to have to do something, make an adjustment or two on that race truck to be able to really compete. Most definitely, and we've seen a few guys come in and pit now, like a Paul Sargent, a Gerringer, looks like maybe a Bratton and Marble, Tim Bills is in, so we got guys pitting now, as we, right now, the leaders, down on pit road, you got the 84 and the 23 right there. Yeah, I think the 20 of Russell Charneski actually forced that, he pitted one lap earlier, and with him running in the top four like that, running as competitive as he is, these guys couldn't just sit there and let him go in and get fresh rubber uh, as it actually turns the lead over to the 26 of Brian Helm. Yeah, Brian Helm stays out on the track and picks up that valuable point, and we'll see how long Brian does stay out as we're right at the halfway mark with these guys pitting. Really surprised everybody just playing follow the leader. I just... As a, as a racer, it's just it's not in me to do that. So it always shocks me to see. But, you know, if you're having a good race, you don't want to lose your spot, and you think maybe you got something for him later, why not? As uh, yeah. John Adams comes out first, you got Brody Hanna right in tow with him. Yeah, and Brian Helm actually goes to pit road this lap now. Now, one thing we're not taking into consideration, you know, this is a two-mile racetrack. The draft here is very important, so... It's not necessarily that you're just following the leader, if you will. If you want to make sure that you stay in that lead pack, if you will, of four or five people, uh, you might want to do it as uh, the 26 of Brian Helm gets into his pit stop, stopped a little bit early. It's going to cost him a couple of valuable seconds as he had to reset the car uh, as he goes there. So we're going to have to see how this all boils out as it looks like James Torrey is also in. Casey John Adams is, in. is back in the pits. John ah. Adams with a speeding penalty, is back in pit road. We've uh, seen this... this last week, Brad. Zach McDaniel did this. Well, it was his race to lose, and John Adams actually took that victory. Now it's John Adams where possibly his race to lose, and he's done it. He's made an error on pit road. How unfortunate. Absolutely. You can never win the race on pit road, but you can definitely lose it. Brian Helm continues to lead this race. Now, you said he was on pit road. Correct. Yeah, it looks like when the, when everything cycles through, it looks like we're going to have the 23 of Brody Hanna as the leader. Is he actually just come through now? Right. So, Brody Hanna on the point. Russell Cherneski, who's, you know, he played that tire game, I believe, early on. And he looks pretty good. He's sitting in second. And Bobby Terrell right there in third place. Yeah, I'll tell you what, these, this round of pit stops really shook everybody out. You had the leaders coming in where they're basically nose to tail for the top four. Um, now you're looking at a second, a second and a half in the top five per driver. Uh, really close between looks like fifth through ninth. Um, but it's really opened up this race. And now it's going to be about tire conservative, uh, running good lap times and trying to build your lead. Well, that's the thing. And, and you know, what do you do through Brody Hanna now? Do you go out here and just set blistering times, or do you just conserve a little bit of time and try and try and save something for that end fight that inevitably will come? Well, if you're Brody Hanna, now you now you really got to look at it in two different ways. You know, if you you just have to beat the 20 now. You know, currently the 20 you know was better on a long run than you. You're gonna to want to save it a little bit. You have to look at this now as this race is gonna go green. So you want to have tires for the entire stint of this run. You don't want to have the 20 running you back down because he's got better long run wear. I would just try to maintain the gap. Don't necessarily run the fastest laps you can. Just keep that 20 at two seconds. As you know, he put four tenths on the 20 that lap. So he has obviously just decided he's gonna go full throttle for it. Hell or high water and see how it ends. Well, no real surprise there. The owner of Full Throttle Sim Racing and Full Throttle TV, Brody Hanna, going full throttle. But Bobby's looking good. You know who got hurt the most here was that eight truck of Bernard Person 
really not a good pit stop for him as he comes out fourth and he's you know four and a half seconds back of our leader yeah, absolutely you know uh the one who i'm looking at i'm trying to make sure that we've already pitted here uh that's yeah who's really come out is that 77 of 10 bills he's come out of nowhere i mean he created 21st he's currently in the fifth spot he's already pitted He's definitely done some pit strategy, and, and he's done a, you know, my hat's off to him because he has just come out of nowhere. He really has. He started in 21st up to 5th place. I mean, when he went into pits, he couldn't have been much more than 8th or 9th, maybe? I don't even know that he was that far up. I think he did some pit strategy here. It seems like he pit, pitted a couple of laps before everybody else. Uh, but you know what? That's what you got to do in this series. You can't just follow the leader and do everything everybody else does. You got to stand out. You got to be different. Because if you're different, you might win something. Uh, I believe he actually had a good race last weekend. Uh, same deal. Uh, started late in the race and was able to make his way up into the top 15. So, hats off to Tim Bills. He's doing an excellent job. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I keep preaching it. I love the decision to be off sequence with the leaders i mean why not what's the worst that could happen you fall back to where you were or you lose a couple of spots at the very end the chances of you gaining are so great that why not take the most curious in the top five absolutely uh if we go back a little bit further in this field let's look at the number 12 truck of william long william long's been doing a good race tonight started 16th he's currently in the eighth position it's just been kind of quiet lurking there uh, He's been able to play a little bit of strategy. You know, obviously he's got a good truck underneath him, a little long run truck. He's having a good night. Larry Anderson, he's in the 10th position, started 18th. Jason Spear, Michael Blackner, all these guys are kind of having a, a good race. Uh, James Torrey started 19th, currently in 13th. Kevin Sargent started 30th on the field. He's currently in the 14th position. A lot of these guys are just having a smooth race. Uh, and able to make up some time on the leaders. Yeah, good runs for all those guys. Really good to, to pick those guys out. You know, this is a tough track, tough league, and anytime you can make up double-digit positions, you're doing something right here. Uh, absolutely. As I think right now the biggest uh, battle on the track is going to be that number 20 of Russell Trinaski before Bobby Trella has kind of come back on him and now we're nose the tail it looks like he's going to challenge for that second place position as the 20 actually throws a block on him going into one ah, i wouldn't call it a block he was up there already bobby kind of swerving up to get that angle i think but um, the 20 we know did a great job of saving in the first run is he doing that again here maybe he is blocking a little bit does he want to keep you know keep saving but keep these guys behind him I'll tell you what, the more that he's worried about Bobby Terrell, he's bringing that eight truck of Bernard Persons to this battle. We're going to have a three truck battle within a lap. Yeah, I think this is where our biggest battle is going to be as we look ahead to Brody Hanna. Still, he's gapping him now up to almost a four second lead for the 23 truck, the Dr. Pepper machine, Brody Hanna. Oh yeah, nobody wants that battle to happen behind him more than the 23 of Brody Hanna. He looks in his rear view mirror, he says, y'all fight it amongst yourself, don't worry about me, I'll just go out here and win this thing. Let's go check in on the 42 truck of uh, Zach McDaniel. Struggled uh, after the first 20 laps here, really surprising from the 42 truck. As we see him move by the 19 here, who's a lap down I believe. Uh, Zach currently shown in ninth place. Yeah, he definitely had a truck that was very loose, very fast right off the get-go, but I think his truck went a little bit too tight on him. He just couldn't keep it underneath him for the long run. Uh, and he's starting to kind of fall into that now. And, you know, with 50 laps in, you know, we've been a good 10 to 12 laps after the last time we pitted. it. He's going to start getting himself in that same situation where the tires are going to start going away on him. Uh, and really, he's going to be sitting for somebody else to come up behind him behind him the 77 continues to do well out here currently in fifth place he's right behind these guys oh don't sleep on him i mean he came he started 21st he's in his fifth the fifth base position he's done it quietly uh and those are the ones you really got to watch out for because you know 
I'm telling you, he's going to be somewhere. If we get a caution, maybe get these guys crew back up together, it's going to be an interesting thing. What about Brian Helm right behind him? He was the last guy to pit, I mean, out of our little lead group, I believe. And uh, here he is in sixth place. Uh, he's looking pretty good, too. Yeah, absolutely. They're doing good. I think he'll he'll have a shot at the 77. Uh, without a caution, I'm not sure really he'd be able to get up to the 23 birdie. Yeah. It's getting to the point now where, you know, Brody is really starting to stretch it out. He's got over a four-second lead. The battle for second place is contended on every single corner. These three trucks are all over each other, and it's just allowing him to, to get away even further. It really is, but we're seeing that time start to even out or even come down slightly. And I think you're going to see the 20 start to move forward here, even though the four now going to make it tough on him as he challenges the inside. The last thing he wants to do is let Bobby Terrell buy him and then have to struggle to get to pass him back. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that necessarily the 20 is as good as it was the first run. The first run, the 20 was able to kind of dictate what he was going to do. Remember, the 20 was the first truck to pit out of our leaders. And now he's actually been put in a situation where he's been running hard to maintain his second place. Uh, now that he's lost it, it's really going to be interesting to see whether or not he can, he can kind of gather his composure, sit back, get his tires back underneath him and make another run. Or if he's kind of used up his stuff a little bit too much. As the 77 is coming up on this group, I'm telling you, that Tim Bills in the 77, he's not done. No, he's not done by a long shot. But the other guy who's not done is that 8 truck, Bernard Person. Lost all that time in the pits, but he's probably our fastest truck on the track for the last 10 laps or so. I mean, he's looking really good out here. Oh, absolutely. I expect this truck to go to the front. Bobby Trail. We saw in the first run he had a little bit of problems as the run went on and the truck got a little bit probably tight on him as the 8 truck goes by him easily. I think the 8 truck is going to have to set sail, but you know he's four over almost five seconds back from the leader. I don't know if it's going to be enough. Right now Brody can just kind of tailor back his lap times just a little bit, so a little bit more, uh, you know, and try to make it. Uh, you know, Bobby has no chance chance he has to go hard every single lap if he's going to close that gap yeah as these guys have dropped about another second with that little battle they had now they'll have a chance to, you know bernie here bernard person will have a chance to start closing in again i you know this gap is probably much too large at this point brody Hanna out front leading this race all he has to do is manage and maintain as he gets by some lap traffic here, every time you go by lap traffic, it's got to worry you. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? Guess who just got into fourth position, that 77 and 10 bills. And you know what? The 26 has actually come right to the back of the 20 as well. So these guys are coming. Uh, don't count out the 77. Don't count out the 26. I don't know if they're going to have enough to get to the leaders, but they're definitely going to have enough to try to you know, get to second place or whatnot. Oh, absolutely. They're both looking really good, all three of these drivers. I mean, like I talked about earlier, the quality of this field is outstanding. I mean, we've got guys a lap down that are race winners and former champions. I mean, it's crazy some of these guys who are way at the back, at the top ten. All these guys could win a race on any given night. Speaking of the top ten, let's take a look in at uh, J.J. Spear here. It's just appeared in the top 10. Absolutely. Him and that 83 Verizon truck. He's been running a very smart race, trying to keep it clean. He just got by the 22 of Michael Blackner. Uh, he's having a really good run. Yeah, absolutely. He started 15th, currently in 10th, looking really good out there. You know, it's a 15th is a tough spot in that middle of the pack. You don't know whether to go or to save tires, but he managed it well. Here he is with a great run. And uh, he's closing a little bit on uh, maybe Zach Daniel. I don't know about Will Long. Will Long, one of those teammates of Brody Hanover at Fury Motorsports as we check back in with our leader as he comes up on Jeff Bratton here. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's just watching those relative times every single time. He clicks a lap off. He's trying to see, is he gaining? Is he pulling away? Is he keeping it even? So, currently, it's, it looks like he's still pulling away just a little bit every single lap. 
trying to catch those lap cars at just the right spot and make sure to be cautiously aggressive, if you will. Um, he knows he has it. The last thing he wants to see is a caution. So as we check in at some of our Bullseye 5 drivers here, currently in 14th is David Hensley. He's third in 29th. Really nice run for him. Probably not going to be a race winner, but David Skillhouse started in 7th and is in 7th. A really solid run. Again, these guys must win to win that prize, but solid runs nonetheless. Looking at Kevin Sargent here. He's running a lap down, currently shown in 24th place. Uh, Daryl Spear, he's in 21st place and just hanging on to the end of the lead lap, I believe. And we got Terry Cooper Jr., who is now shown in 18th place after starting in fifth place. Really tough for Terry Cooper Jr. tonight. Yeah, and if we're talking about tough breaks, you know, let's look at the 84 John Adams. He's currently one lap down. This is the truck that was battling for the lead the entirety. Our winner from last week. Unfortunate pit road incident. Uh, speeding down pit road is what we were assuming. He's currently one lap down. It's actually the uh, the O line that Kevin Sarchin actually goes by him and starts pulling him away. As we look in here now at the second through what is that about fifth place? That's where the main battle is. Bobby Terrell trying to hang on to third here behind Bernard Person. Tim Bills continues to move forward. He's got the 26 of Brian Helm in tow. Those two are probably looking the best at this point outside of our leader, the 23 of Brody Hanna. Yeah, absolutely. The The one thing that I have to have a concern about the 26 and 77 is when they pit it. They might have uh, pit it a little bit early just to get a little bit of advantage over these trucks. So they might have a little bit older tires, which you might be starting to see a little bit. Uh, but all in all, I mean, they've had a fantastic run. They did what they needed to do to get there. Tim Bills, again, started 21st in the fourth position. Brian Helm started 13th in the fifth. Uh, without a doubt, your biggest movers in this race as far as your top five goes. And it's interesting to see what they're going to do and whether or not they can better that. Yeah, it is interesting. Incredibly hard to make a move here. You've really got to get inside of someone. And Tim Bills is trying everything he can to get inside of that bumper of the four truck of Bobby Carroll. Yeah, this is one of those places where you can hurt your yourself more than your competitor trying to be over aggressive to try to make a move. I mean, you throw it in there a little bit too much, all of a sudden you're tight, and you're just going to lose a lot of time. So as much as he's trying to get under the floor of Bobby Trail, he's looking in the back and looking at that 26. So he's under constant pressure right now. The 20 still right there, uh, and ultimately the, the 8's there. They're trying to get to him. But for right now, I think they just got to kind of be a little bit patient, take the opportunity when they have it, and just don't force it right now. Exactly right. The more you force it, the more you'll fall. Here, coming up to almost 10 to go. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking here, we got to start a new pool, Brad. And that is, when will FTSR ever have a caution? Will it happen this season? Well, let's just go back to a play track. We'll have plenty of them. Yeah, there's always the play track. I mean, I don't know. They do play track screen on, on occasion, too. So, well, more often than not, to be honest with you. Great league, great bunch, man. We really got to credit these guys because it's not like they don't race, man. They race hard, and these are some of the fastest drivers. I mean, you see a pro like John Adams out there getting passed on the track. You know these guys aren't slouches. Oh, absolutely. These guys are first class. I mean, at the end of the day, you can't really ask any more of this. You know, we have a battle right now for second through fifth, nose to tail almost. Um, you know, it's constant. And this is after we're coming to the 65 laps, so we're coming to 10 to go, you know, green flag the entire time. We've had green flag pit stops, you know. Um, pit stops will do that, especially green flags. You'll, you'll get some covers, you'll get some goers, you'll get some guys that are a little bit too aggressive, get speeding penalties, and that's exactly what's happened today. And you know what? This is the league to be in. If you want green flag racing, you want hard racing, but respectful drivers that are going to give you the ability to run, this is where you want to be. That's exactly right. 
If you look at a couple other guys here, starting in the 11th, Michael Blackner, the 28th of James Torrey is in 12th. Tracy Powers has been really good this season, sitting in 13th right now. A Larry, or no, David Hensley is going to be next on the board. He's in 14th currently. Yeah, and uh, 71 of that Blackwater product truck with Casey McMullen. He's actually clawed his way back up to 15th. Uh, good to see the 71 on the move as he puts a move on that 24 truck there. Gets a little bit of a bobble going, but uh, good to see him moving. He did not move during that first run. Definitely figured something out with adjustments. Yeah, it looks like we got the, the nine truck of Jason Martin coming to pit road. It looks like, unfortunately, he had some incidents. He's currently 17 laps down. It looks like he had some trouble. Yeah, definitely issues on the nine truck. Unfortunate for him. As we look back up front, the 23, Brody Hanna, still on the point, leading the way, looking sharp in his Dr. Pepper truck. You know what? I'll tell you what. He's looking very sharp, but you know what he's looking? He's looking in his mirror. He went from over a four-second lead to he's lost over a second of that lead. Now, is that because the eight truck of Bernard Person's been saving this whole time? Or is he slowly starting to back off the pace to try to save that tire? Because right now, it looks like Brody Hanna's starting to lose a little bit of that lead. It's just a matter of whether or not the eight truck has enough time to get there. Yeah, I doubt there's enough time. And Brody being the consummate racer that he is, is probably backed off some to make sure he doesn't, you know, wear his stuff out at the end of this race, but you never know. Impressive, uh, whoa, we got contact, the 77. Whoa, the 77 and the 26 maybe. Looked like there was some serious contact back there. Maybe go back and look, that, look at that for us, Brad. I don't want to go to a replay here with so few laps left, but that was dangerous. Almost had our first caution of the night here. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like two trucks that were just really pushing for the same spot. The 77 seemed like it, it pushed a little bit. And uh, at the same time, the 26 wasn't really willing to give up any of that. Uh, so... All, everybody made it through. Everybody seems to be a little no worse for the wear, so we continue on. Yeah, we continue on. Green, seven to go in this race. Brody Hanna still leading. Bernard Person is clawing his way back up here. I don't think he's going to have enough laps, but uh, two, two and a half seconds back here. He, you know, a little bobble, a little mistake from the 23, and he'll be right there. Yeah, or, or something else, you know, a little little contact like we just saw, enough to bring out the yellow, and all of a sudden we have a totally different race on our hands. But someone you've been interested in all night was Tim Bills. Now he had a little bit of a contact there, a little interesting deal. I'm not sure what happened, but he's in third place right now. He's got in front of Bobby Terrell, Russell Janowski, Brian Helm. Great job by that 77 truck. And you know what? That 20 truck, he's coming back. Remember, he faded a little bit. He seems like he faded back a little bit, took care of his tires, and he's challenging the four right now for our third position. Yeah, third never position, never sorry. sleep on Russell. He's a really, you know, he's a fast racer and a great racer. And I know from talking to him personally, he's always willing to adapt, always willing to learn. And here he is, you know, with those tires, he did the same thing in the first run. Yeah, it looks like the Ford truck's really starting to struggle. He might be at the end of his run as far as his tires because the Toyota was able to get by him. It looks like the 26 is giving a lot better rotation throughout the corners. The Ford truck seems to be struggling. So I expect the 26 to get by the four and put the four back into the sixth position. Up front, Brody Hanna continuing to lead, kind of opening it back up a little bit. He's at least maintaining that gap at this point. And I think he's probably doing what you said earlier. He's watching those times. He's maintaining that gap. He just doesn't want to burn his stuff up. And he's, he's not going to let Brody, uh, Bernard close in. And he's not going to try and pull on him either. Absolutely. This is his race. He knows it's his race to win. Right now, the only thing he does not want to see is a caution. Yeah, you always got to be worried with lap traffic around. We look back now, 
the 20 gets around Tim Bills here on the inside. So put Russell Cherneski up to third spot, doing a great job as Tim Bills struggling, kind of throwing a block on the four there. I'm sure I'm not sure if that was a block or not, but uh, Tim Bills not really willing to give up a spot here. He's racing tough with Bobby Terrell as they go three wide here. Brian Helm down low. Yeah, I think the the 26 at Helm is going to be the winner in this one. Uh, it seems that the four is starting to lose a little bit of grip on his tires. I think the 77 of Tim Bells, I think he did pull a pit strategy move, which was able to give him the track position. He's just running out of tires. I mean, we're at the end of this run. Uh, it's just a matter of who can turn the best time. And, and now we got lap traffic on top of that. Yeah, Tim Bells, he's not ready to give up. He looks down to the inside one more time. He just doesn't see, have it left, I don't think. Right, you can see middle of the corner, he's gonna, he's having to jump out of it. He's not getting the rotation in that truck. He just doesn't have the grip in those tires. I'll tell you who does still have the grip in that tires is that 23 of Brody Hanna, our leader, still at 2.75 gap. You know, we're coming up to the final lap. It's his, it's his race. The only thing he doesn't want to see is a caution. I think he's going to do it absolutely gonna do it with two to go here he's coming out into turn three he'll be coming around and taking that white flag one more to go for Brody Hanna our race leader looking great tonight comes down into corner one here he's got Brian Conklin right in front of him no need to do anything silly here he goes to the outside yeah I think that the biggest race we have right now is going to be between the four and the 26 as far as coming to the line everybody else has kind of been able to spread out a little bit yeah we'll keep an eye on that as we watch Brody Hanna come to the line for his race victory here. Great job by that 23 truck. Back behind him, Brian Ham down low. But Bobby Terrell gonna prevail here. He's gonna take a second, or we missed Bernard Person. Bernard Person fourth. second. Russell Chernowski's in third. That was the race for fourth. Bobby Terrell will take that. Brian Helm will be in fifth. Absolutely, David Schillhouse is gonna be in sixth. Jason Spear seventh. Eighth is going to be Brian uh, Michael Blackner. Ninth, William Long. Jinx Torrey is going to round out your top ten. Well, once again, Brad, a great job by these guys. Another green flag race. Brody Hanna, it looks like he's back, man. And, and we couldn't be happier to see it. He was getting so discouraged. The team was struggling so bad. And all of a sudden, all it took was one little nugget that he found. And here we are victory lane for the 23 absolutely i mean three races three different completely different races um i still don't know who the favorite is in this series i mean we've had people dominate for entire races Brady Hammond. he's you know you can say that he almost dominated this entire race you know the last race you had somebody like john adams dominating uh, you know, who's going to be the big dog? Who's going to be the one that establishes dominance over this season? And you know what? I don't think there's going to be. I think we're going to have multiple winners, and I think the points are just going to get closer. Yeah, you're exactly right. There are so many quality guys in here, and you can see some of them were 15th on back tonight. But the next race, you're going to see them at the top. It's amazing. But Brody Hanna, Great job tonight. You know, guys like Bernard Person always seems to be in the mix. Russell Chernowski is he's learning these these tires out, and uh, he is in the mix every race as well. Bobby Terrell, of course. I mean, but all over the field. Sherwood Williford back near the back tonight. He'll be up there. A ton of great drivers out here. Tim Bell's put on a good showing. Fortunately, he's going to finish way back. Is he? I don't know if he disconnected or got disconnected again. Uh, another internet issue for the 77 truck at the very end as he was fading a little bit in the, in the standings. Yeah, heartbreak for some, elations for others. If you're Brody Hanna, you know, you came in here 
you might not have qualified the way you wanted to, but the race couldn't have fallen any better for you. I mean, five laps, you were in the top five. I mean, he just went straight through this field. He had a mission. He knew what he had to do, and he executed he absolutely did. And speaking of missions, let's take a quick commercial break. We'll look in on the mission of iRacing and their championship series, which now is sponsored by Coca-Cola. This guy is fighting for $300,000. Let's take a quick look in on that commercial. We'll be right back. And it starts right here and right now. Let's go racing from Daytona. That looks like one heck of a series they got going on on iRacing. But we, we're we no slouches here at Full Throttle Sim Racing. I think we got a great series going on here as we look at the 23 park down there on Victory Lane right now in the 19th hole. Congrats to the 23 year Brody Hanna. Yeah, absolutely. He put on a great race. I mean, he couldn't have asked for anything better. I mean, he might, he might not have gotten the grid, like I said, that he wanted. But his truck handled all night. You knew he was a contender within the first three laps. I mean, he was able to make up so much position. He didn't fade. No trouble on pit road. Green flag stops. Green flag the entire way. He really took it in. Yeah, he really did. What a great job winning this race tonight. We have with us right now Russell Chinevsky, who finished in third place. Also did a fabulous job, Russ. I mean, it was a tough race for you tonight. It looked like maybe you were saving some tire in that first run, trying to feel out just what was the right amount to save. Talk a little bit about your run tonight, Russ. Yeah, thanks. It was actually, yeah, it was a very good run. I really wasn't saving. I just had the truck set up way too loose, and I literally... Uh, had to just ride it out, and I needed like oh, pretty much 15 laps, and then it came alive. As you seen on both of those long runs there, that's when it came alive. But it was just too free. I needed to snug it up a little bit. I couldn't attack. I couldn't attack. It killed me. Well, that's really interesting because you know up here in the booth, all we can do is really speculate, but never really considered that that was the case that the, the track would tighten up over the run like that. But that's uh, that's great information. Talk a little bit about the battles you had because, like you said, your car was better uh, in the second half of the run, and you had to battle through some some guys, you know, passing several cars along the way. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. In that practice session, other night, I noticed on a long run, I, the guys just started backing up to me, and I pretty much ran tonight what we ran in that practice session the other night, and uh, I figured it would do the same thing. Those guys were going to be fast on the get-go, and I figured it might fall back to me, and uh, that's pretty much what happened here. But uh, Brody, he he did a good job. He got out there on that pit stop, and he just was probably laying down some good times and just pulled away, and good win for him. Yeah, great job by the 23. Now, did you figure, like, once he got out front, was it was it clean air? Was clean air big tonight, or, or is it just that he, he was just that much stronger tonight? I think he was just that much stronger, and his truck was just hooked up there early on on new tires. So I was just so free and so loose, it was scary free. I just had to be careful and just, you know, keep it off the wall and keep it on the track and just wait for it to come in. And when it came in, it came in strong, but I needed it to come in, like, you know, a good eight laps earlier. Yeah, now talk about the pit stop you made. Now, did you you did not come in with the leaders, did you? No, I figured I'm just going to come in on lap 38, no matter where I am. And that's what I did. Yeah, well, I always like it that you the doing something different from the leaders. I mean, you know, you you had a plan obviously all along, but we watched those guys and some struggled, some didn't, but it looks like you made up a little bit of ground uh, making that call. I might have. I usually come in a little conservative, conservative, and that hurts me. But I figured, you know, I'm gonna come in one lap or two laps before those guys, and I'll just come in by myself. I won't have to worry about, you know what I mean? Somebody getting rear-ending me or avoiding somebody. That's what I like to do. 
Well, Russ, it was a great run by you, man. A third place. It's a fantastic points night. You're going to be right in the thick of this thing all year long, man. We think you look great out there. And congrats on the third place finish. Thank you very much. And thank you guys for the broadcast. You guys do a good job. Uh, you bet. Brad, that was uh, Russell Charneski there, our third place finisher. Uh, he, had, he had himself a hell of a race. Oh, he absolutely did. I mean, he he was there the entire time. He he made some incredible moves. Came on strong at the end. But you know who else came on strong? That eight truck of Bernard Persons. I'm with the the second place finisher of the night. The eight of Bernard Persons. Bernard, you had a great run tonight. Uh, seemed like it got away from you a little bit on one of the pit stops. Just kind of tell us how your run went tonight. Yeah, the run came pretty good. It's like you said, I lost all my time in pit road entering. I mean, by the time we came out, I came out of pit road, it was like 4.6 to the liters. And it's kind of hard to make all that up on the track when we're basically running somewhat the same speed. Yeah, it seemed like you had really good short run speed. Uh, maybe a little bit towards the end of that first run, it started to get a little bit tight. It seemed like it went away a little bit. Um, just kind of walk us through, you know, the progression of your truck, you know, uh, where you were able to make up your time. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we saw you lost a little bit through that pit road exchange, but it looked like towards the end, you were actually starting to gain a little bit back on Brody. Yeah, I made, um, I went from 64 tape to 65. I probably could have went a lot higher from listening to what everybody else was running. Um, but that helped out the truck with looseness. So are you battling mainly a loose condition throughout the entire night? No, I needed it to be a little more loose. That's why I put some tape on it from 64 okay. to 65. But I could All have right. ran a little more from what I was hearing. All right. Well, excellent. Well, we're really glad that you were able to hear. It seems like you're going to be a, a definite factor in every single one of these races. You're a very consistent racer. We really appreciate that. Um, you know, un unfortunately, we did see what happened. You know, you did lo lose a little bit of time. It doesn't seem like you were able to make it back. But overall, I mean, you had a great battle. At the same time, you know, you came out and you were in a battle with four or five trucks. And, and I'm sure that didn't help as far as trying to claw back any time. No, it was great. I had fun racing with Bobby. You know, everybody here is such great drivers. Um, respect every one of them. And uh, I had fun. You know, second place isn't, isn't a bad finish. No, absolutely. I guarantee there's a good 25 other people in the server that would love to finish second place. So, uh, Bernard, the time is yours. If you'd like to thank anybody or, you know, cover your sponsors or whatnot, please go ahead and do so. Yeah, I'd definitely like to thank you guys for putting on a good uh, broadcast. And um, definitely like to thank all my teammates, um, Spears Motorsports, Brian, and uh, he's been a big uh, help to, uh, to our team. And uh, hopefully we get some uh, more good finishes and a couple more wins. Absolutely. Well, it was great talking with you, Bernard. And again, congratulations on your second place finish. Uh, Dean, that was Bernard Pearson's in the second place. Uh, I believe you're standing by with today's race winner. Yeah, I got Brody Hanna here down in Winner's Circle. Man, Brody Hanna, the owner of this great league, Full Throttle Sim Racing. He's the owner of Full Throttle TV, and now he's the owner of a trophy here at Auto Club. Congratulations, Brody. Man, I can't tell you how hard I try to win some of these races. I don't know. We, it seems like I have the curse uh, when we broadcast these races. But, man, the truck was bad fast tonight, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun racing up there with John and with – with Bernie, with Russ, where he, wherever he came from. That's what I was just telling him. I don't know where he came from because I looked up and he was on my bumper. I was like, what the? So uh, a lot of fun. I hate to see that happen to John in the pits. Uh, we were going to have, have a hell of a battle, I'm sure. And uh, But, man, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm elated. Yeah, John, a uh, really unfortunate incident there. He he benefited last week when Zach McDaniel made the same mistake that he did, and that kind of gave him the victory. It would have been a, a fight for sure. And tonight, he makes the mistake that gives you the victory. Again, there would have been a battle to see who, who would have won that race. But you look great. Starting back in, I don't know, about 11th place, Brody, worked your uh, way through the field really early and really quickly. I was worried that you were burning your stuff up. Were you concerned at all? I was a little worried. I got a history of doing that. Um, but uh, I got to tell you, I got to give all the credit in the world to TJ 
Bartel for the setup. He worked hard on this setup, man. He had it dialed in. It was so fast through the middle of the corner, especially three and four. I could just roll the center so well and uh, get off the corner and it carries so much speed there. Um, but yes and no, I was a little worried uh, that I was running a little too hard, but I knew I had to get up there uh, and get up front. It was fast. We just, we missed it in qualifying. We didn't work that much on qualifying we had a little something but uh actually uh the driver probably messed up more than the setup in qualifying but uh but yeah i just yeah that can happen but tj was having a great run man he was up there in that top five hanging with you guys you had uh william long who had a nice finish in ninth and that's team fury over there i believe tj's with you guys and uh you guys are looking strong this year yeah yeah we, we definitely you're, you're are. looking strong now seems like you figured something out we did. Uh, we, we found a little something uh, that we hope will help us, especially at these mile and a half. Um, TJ's tried some things and he really likes it. Um, we're kind of getting our ducks in a row finally and uh, it's paying off. Um, I want to get TJ. TJ's got to get a win this year. Uh, he's had some bad luck this year so far and uh, got caught up in a little accident there, but yeah, everybody's doing well. Will, TJ. I got to thank those guys for working on these setups and uh, communicating so well we're uh, we're getting it figured out yeah it's great to hear man we're really happy for you brody we we're uh, you know you guys were struggling a little bit there early in the season but you got to figure it out now here you are in winner's circle again man couldn't be happier for you congratulations looks like you're going to be a contender all year you, you know bringing up you got to be really happy early in this race you had two three four cars getting by a, a, a ex-pro who's trying to be pro again and john adams uh you got to be super excited that guys in this league can run at that level. Uh, yeah, John's a heck of a driver, and uh, uh, we we definitely were pretty excited. We were hanging with him and able to pull back up on him and get by him there uh, with Bernie, and uh, Russ had something for those guys. I mean, it's uh, the level of talent in this league this year is going to make it extremely hard to get any of these victories, and it makes these victories even more important, especially you know, from my standpoint. If you can win on any of these races at any track, you've done something. And we've said that all year. And uh, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm super excited about finally getting a, uh, a victory this year. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about the talent that we have at Full Throttle Sim Racing. You can go through the list. You look at guys finishing from 20th to 30th place, and they can win a race. we got some great talent across the board. Certain nights, certain guys are going to come forward. We've seen the Tim Bills come forward tonight and look pretty good. And uh, Tracy Power has been doing good this year. A lot of new faces doing well. It's really, really good to see out here. Yep, and I got a long list of people to think. Like I said, first off, TJ working on this setup, getting it dialed in. Uh, it's a Dr. Pepper kind of night. Got to thank Dr. Pepper for the sponsorship. It's awesome. Um, got to thank the team, um, Fury Motorsports, for working on these setups. Got to thank uh, all the guys uh, in the league, honestly, for keeping it clean and green tonight. A lot of great green flag racing. And uh, and thank you guys for, for uh, bringing it out for everybody, putting it on, putting on the show. All right, there you have it, Brody Hanna. Congratulations again on your victory. Brad, what a night for the 23 truck. He was able to to make a lot of headway right out of the bat. And, you know, it was really his to lose once uh, that mistake on pit road by John Adams happened. He was able to get out up front, maintain that lead, and, you know, all the rest of everybody on the truck, hats off to him. They they did a good setup underneath that truck. All of the drivers ran an excellent race, green flag race in the entire time, green flag pit stops, no issues. You know, the amount of talent in this league, you know, that's two races straight, completely green flag. We're in for one hell of a season. Yeah, we really are. The season brought to you by Blackwater Products USA. Please make sure you go check them out. Check out their Facebook, uh, Facebook page, Blackwater Hydrographics. I mean, these guys got some great stuff. You'll love them. Check them out. We love them, and we think you will too. Coming up next, we've got next, well, on Wednesday night, this series continues. And I got to look at the schedule, folks. <laughs> 
As we take yeah. a look in here on our coming dates, we've got the Phoenix 200 next week, followed by Atlanta, Homestead, and Texas. But Phoenix, wow, another uh, another great track, man. We're going to have a great race here, Brad. Yeah, I think that's going to be one of those where somebody unloads that truck and they're either going to love it or they're going to hate it because that's just one of those tracks where you either can really get around that track fast or somebody's going to really struggle throughout the entire night definitely we'll make sure you come watch us here on full throttle tv every wednesday at 9 p.m we got this blackwater products truck series from full throttle sim racing can't get any better man go check them out if you're interested if you're a green flag racer you're an old school racer and you, you got some speed come and check us out man we'd love to have you up here but and we also cover on saturday nights we got bedane racing we're looking to add a sunday night broadcast with another league and we hope you guys will come out and support us all the time we can't wait to do it again next week until then 